You know that even on a rainy, dreary day, the sun's still out. Today, we're going to tell the story of Ron, Patch the Pirate, and Shelley Hamilton. And we're going to show you how God is still good, even in the midst of a storm. Ever since I was a boy, I've been fascinated with God's creation. I'm traveling the planet to tell his story about his world. I'm Jim Scudder Jr. Come with me on another exciting adventure in grace. We're going to tell the fascinating story of Ron and Shelley Hamilton. Ron Hamilton is known as Patch the Pirate. Patch the Pirate was an adventure, it was an audio program that I enjoyed so much when I was young. And when I talk about Patch the Pirate, it takes me back to childhood. I just loved the adventures that they would take us on in our mind. We had an adventure down the Mr. Slippy River. Brilliant writing, real creativity. It's incredible what they were able to produce for children. And I love the fact that uh, we could go on these adventures and we can learn things about God. And, and, and Patch the Pirate was influential in so many lives of children as they were growing up. But the story of Patch the Pirate isn't a story of sunshine and everything's great all the time. It's actually a story that began out of cancer of his left eye. It's also a story that includes the suicide of his son. And it's the story of him now having early onset of dementia. We're going to interview his wife, Shelly Hamilton. She was Sissy the Seagull on the episodes. And we're gonna to try to tell the story of two amazing people that can see God in control, even in the midst of a storm. Sally, I really appreciate your ministry and growing up as a kid, listening to the Pastor Pirate. My kids growing up listening to Pastor Pirate. Now I have grandkids. Guess what they're listening to? Pastor the Pirate. <laughs> Great. Sissy Siegel. I mean, <laughs> how did that start? Okay, well, the first recording we did um, like in 1979, and I, we were just gonna do music, and then at the last minute, Ron said, let's put in a few characters for kids uh -huh. and a little bit of drama. It wasn't a complete story. It was kind of almost a last minute, hey, let's It was let's, a last minute idea. Yeah. And I woke up the day of the recording with laryngitis. And so Ron says, oh, I don't think you can do this. And I said, well, I kind of squeak and squawk, so. I tried to imitate it since then. It's kind of like typecasting, right? Yes. <laughs> you sound like a seagull, so now you're a seagull. So then for the rest I of... I just don't look like a seagull. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. For the rest of all these years, you've been Sissy the Seagull. Have yes. you played other characters? Just a few minor. I was a mother on Custer's Last Stand. Like, husband, why don't you make your children behave? Husband? Husband, why don't you make your children behave? <laughs> you're, yeah. you're bringing all this back to me. <laughs> I, I listened to all of them. I memorized a lot of them. But we were so blessed growing up, kind of with that. And you had good quality teaching, entertaining, very entertaining, yeah. big toe. <laughs> That's my husband. <laughs> you know, I mean, who, who comes up with a calliope <laughs> going down and the shrimp and all the stuff, yes. you know, moccasin. I mean, yes. just, to me, it, there's brilliance in this. God mm -hmm. really blessed you know, the creativity in your life or mm -hmm. your family. Yeah, Ron is mm -hmm. the really creative one, so. Maniac, big toe. Big bad toe. Way anchor. Boom. But Captain, there's still no place to go. The father. The father. The father. This family's my own, so I do my best to make a happy home. Now, Lives are marked by major events usually, and then mm -hmm. we fill in those gaps with kind of the everyday, mundane, just life, mm -hmm. waking up, doing the things. What were those major things in your life that, that marked those main milestones? After Ron and I got married, three years into it, um, a doctor found cancer in his left eye. And so, we went through three months of testing and they thought it was in the back of the eyeball and they weren't sure if it for sure was cancer, but after about three months of testing, 
they said we need to do surgery mm -hmm. and go in directly and look at it. So when they did the surgery, they said either it's gone to his brain and we'll just stitch him back up, or it may just be a blood, you know, a burst blood vessel, mm -hmm. or if it is indeed cancer and it's self-contained, we'll take the eyeball out. So, so going into it, you didn't know what no, the outcome would be. No. And of course he didn't either. No. But from that. But it was a blessing because it had not gone to his brain. So well, that was what the doctor said and, at first. And, and we're always able to see the blessings. It's mm -hmm. sometimes hard when we're maybe traumatized by whatever it was that mm -hmm. happened. And, and that's natural. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we always wonder, how could God let this happen? And mm -hmm. I'm sure thoughts had gone through your mind. But I heard Ron say once that he thanked the Lord for his eye being taken. Oh, yes. And I'm thinking... Would most people thank the Lord? Yeah, I'm not sure, but I've thought of that a number of times because I questioned why this was happening. But Ron, I never heard him complain about it or have any bitterness about it. He just accepted it. Hmm. And anyway, it, it was a blessing to me that he could encourage me and not be down about it. And so that kind of helped me understand that God was definitely in this and Ron believed that. So. And from that, uh, a kind of a famous song, Rejoice of the Lord mm -hmm. was written. Mm -hmm. There was, I, I, I think I was reading or I heard that you all said, you also discovered you were expecting. Yes, so that was a good thing that came out of it. All in that same time, right? Well, that around same Around the week. same day, the same week. Uh, yeah. And so from, <laughs> from this trial, you also have this blessing that's coming. And mm -hmm. I think you mm -hmm. named him Jonathan, which yes. is a gift. Yes, gift from God, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and he was a gift. So so from that also, he became Patch the Pirate. Yes, yes. How, why, why Patch the Pirate? How did that come out? Well, he did get a prosthesis, a uh, false eye, eventually. I mean, first it was just like a, a silicone placeholder. <laughs> And so he started wearing the patch to cover that up. Uh -huh. And then when he actually got the false eye, kids were already saying, look, mom, there's a pirate. Because, you know, when you have this patch on. And kids, I'm telling you. Oh, they say they exactly will, what they, they think. They will say what they think. And especially if it's something like that. <laughs> and they're just mesmerized by that. Yes, yes. I mean, every time we go out, usually there's one kid going, and I go, yes, he's a pirate. He's Patch the Pirate. And I remember your husband saying, too, that he always wished he had kind of a, a, nickname. a nickname or a dangerous you know, oh, yeah. occupation. And now he's a pirate. So he yep. kind of he kind of took that and, and exactly. went Exactly. Once that false eye came in, he still wanted to wear the patch. And I said, honey, but I didn't marry a pirate. <laughs> and he said, Shelly, you're going to have to accept this is the kid in me. I enjoy, I enjoy this and I enjoy the kids. And he thought people would be more comfortable talking to him because his, his false eye did not move. And he just thought, he said, I think people would be more comfortable talking to me with a patch on. So I finally accepted it. I had an old pair of black boots and I cut out a patch. I made a patch a lot like this one. Went to church the following Sunday, a little buddy of mine came running up and said, What's that on your left eye? I said, well, it's a pirate patch. He looked at me and said, are you a pirate? And I said, I guess I am now. You can call me Patch the Pirate. So he ran back and told all of his little friends. Moments later, just before the service, a whole troop of them came running down to the front shouting, Ahoy, Patch the Pirate. First time I ever heard that and heard it millions of times since, but that was the first time. And we began to travel, Dr. Garlock, my wife's dad asked me to start traveling with him in meetings, and so we started traveling. I'd speak to the high school, he'd speak to the adults, he'd work with the adult choir, I'd work with the high school choir, and then um, we'd have a concert on, on Friday nights. I also spoke in the elementary chapel, but we didn't have any music for elementary kids, and so we had a concert where the adults sang, the high schoolers sang, and uh, the kids said, well, we want to sing too. And I said, well, we don't have any music for you. And they said, we'll write some, you're Patch the Pirate. And so my first two songs were Jonah and David, come and listen to my fearful tale. That was my first song for kids. 
We began to sing it every week, and then the kids uh, said, well, you've made recordings for everybody else, can't you make one for us? And I said, well, maybe. So we quickly wrote 16 songs, and then at the last minute I decided we could weave them together with some characters. I'd be patched. We did it early in the morning, so I was Wally Whale. Shelly had laryngitis the day we did it, so we made her a seagull. Then I had three friends, we smurfed their voices, made them into oysters. And that was our first Patch the Pirate recording. It was a record. I don't know if you've ever seen a record, but it's a big black flat thing with a hole in the middle. It'd been out about three or four months, and the kids said, we need another one. The parents said, we've got to have another one. We're sick and tired of this one. So for the last 38 years, we've done one a year. And something that looked like it was, looked like it was a trial, God changed into one of the greatest blessings of our lives. God has been so good. From all of that was born, I mean, you do a lot of other music, yes. other churches and mm -hmm. sacred music, majesty music, but from that was born Patch the Pirate. Exactly. And almost every year, a new episode coming yes. out in, in amazing adventures all over the place, to space, to Africa, to camp, yeah. to, you know, yeah. down the Mississippi River. So <laughs> all of that came out of what most people would say is just a horrible tragedy. Yes. And there, you know, sometimes we go through tragedies and you don't, maybe necessarily see what good God is working out of it. But in this particular instance, we were able to see how much good mm -hmm. God, you know, has brought out of what seemed like a, a terrible loss at the time. It's something interesting. Um, <laughs> I was talking to a, a woman recently that her husband had the same kind of cancer Ron did in his left eye, a melanoma. And she said they took it out and said it was self-contained in the eyeball. And a year later, the cancer returned mm. and he was gone. Mm. And it just made me think, okay, that was 40 years ago, Ron lost his eye. And they said it was self-contained, but I've had him all these years. And it's very possible that he could have been the one that was gone within a year. But God had a reason for him mm -hmm. staying around. These 40 years, um, it's like a window that God gave him mm -hmm. to write music, beautiful poetry, stories. Um, and I don't know, it's that 40 year window. And now I, he's got dementia. He's diagnosed with dementia and it's frontotemporal and his language is being taken from him. So I just feel like that 40 years of writing mm -hmm was in God's plan for him. And now that very gift that God gave him is what is being affected by the disease. How hard is that to thank God for something that just seems bad? I think it's very hard. I think, um, I don't know how he did it. It took me a while to thank God for it, but God always gives us blessings despite hardships. You, in. I say you have to practice to the art of perfection, <laughs> focusing on God's blessings to you because you can get really down if you focus on the hardships because we all have hardships. And we would tend to, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's easy to do. When, I've when done Peter it. When <laughs> Peter stepped out of the boat, he immediately started worrying about the waves. Yes. And he took his eyes off Christ. Off Christ. It's so easy for us to just look around and just look at the problems mm -hmm. and forget the blessing, forget yes. how good God is. Oh, exactly. And, and that could have easily happened mm -hmm. a number of times in your life, Yes, but for sure then. Mm -hmm. And there have been times that I have taken my eyes off Christ and then realized that was no good. It, it didn't get me anywhere and it wasn't trusting and it can, you know, make you fall into the depths of despair if you, if you let it. He sat down uh, after all of that mm -hmm. and started writing mm -hmm. a song. Yes. Uh, had your husband written songs before that one? He had written three songs as a master's degree project in music. Mm -hmm. It was his first time writing songs. And so he had written three on the cross. Mm -hmm. It is finished, the blood of Jesus, and come to the cross. But um, that those were the only three he had written. And then he pieced together a lot of scriptures that people had sent him in cards and took it from Philippians 4, 4, Rejoice in the Lord, he makes no mistake. For when I am tried and purified, I shall come forth as gold. 
And that was his testimony, and he lived it. I can say he lived it. <laughs> when trying his servant and molding a man, give thanks to the Lord, though your testing seems long. In darkness he giveth a song. He giveth a oh, rejoice in the Lord. He makes no mistake. He knoweth the end of each path that I take. For when I am tried and Music is a gift of God. It's it is. so unique. It's so different than look oh. at all the animals in creation. You just don't see what God has put in us. You know, yeah. the birds can sing and stuff, but oh, yeah. but nothing like composing yes. the instruments, the singing, and all what the it does for the soul mm -hmm. when you when you sing, or how you can remember the the lyrics, the text when you put it to music, yes. and when you put scripture to music, or you know, it just stays with you, stays in your mind, and it's a very powerful, very powerful tool. And some of the songs that you all wrote, your husband or you, um, came from a, a real life story. So the funny example is your your son, I think a little, a young son, Jonathan, uh -huh. saw somebody dressed up as an Easter bunny yes. at the door, yes. right? And he was, he was screaming <laughs> and couldn't put him to bed, so Ron wrote the song. How Can I Fear? How Can I Fear? So it's just beautiful how <laughs> that kind of a real life story triggers a song and yes. that song has blessed many people. God is glorified when we praise him through trials. It's easy to praise him when things are going well, but when they, the trials come and we still praise him, he is, it's a form of worship. I think and when you worship God in a trial, mm -hmm. that's real worship and I think that's yes. what he, that's what he's looking for, yes. is our heart. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a show anymore. I mean, we, I need you, Lord, I need you. Yes. You know, because yes. you do. That's another song, Lord, I need you, yeah. I think some of the songs that have come that are the most um, beloved of Ron's are ones that were written out of trial hmm. for some reason. And you look at, it is well with my soul. Exactly. The writer just had lost his wife and three daughters, mm -hmm. just, so many stories like that that people are emotionally drawn to because they say, oh, that person trusted God. Through that, I can too. God can help me do it too. <laughs> Amen. When I enter heaven's glory, and I see my Savior's face. I will offer him 10,000 years of praise. Then I'll find that special one. In whose life I saw God's Son. And through tears of joy with trembling lips these words. I'll say, I saw Jesus in you, I saw Jesus in you, I could hear his voice in the words he said, I saw Jesus in you. In your eyes I saw his care, I could see love was there, you were faithful, and I saw Jesus in you. When I stand before my Father to receive my life's reward, and my soul is bathed in God's eternal day. When this race on earth is run, 
And God sees the works I've done More than anything I long To hear my Father say I saw Jesus in you I saw Jesus in you I could hear his voice in the words you said I saw Jesus in you In your eyes I saw his care I could see his love was there You were faithful And I saw Jesus in you You were faithful And I saw Jesus in you I hope you enjoyed hearing the story of Ron and Shelley Hamilton. We'll continue the story next week and you'll be gripped by all the things that they had to go through in order to serve the Lord. And sometimes people say, well, you know, serving the Lord, everything's gonna be great, it's always gonna be sunny. Well, you know, it is always sunny. But you know what? Sometimes the clouds and the rain block the sun. The sun's still out. I get to fly an airplane and sometimes we launch off into cloudy, dreary weather and I often forget to bring my sunglasses. But I always wish I had because we're gonna break out of those clouds and we're gonna be in the sun. God is still good even when it's hard, even when life is tough. And I can't imagine a couple of people having a harder life with cancer and then a suicide of a child and then dementia. All of these things affecting the life, but still, they say even in the middle of our tears, even in the middle of our sorrow, God is good. God loves us. God cares for us. We're going to trust him. He knows what he's doing. And I hope that's something that you've learned today. I also hope that you know Jesus as your Savior. Because without him, we have no hope. Without him, it is terrible. This world is terrible, and there's nothing good. But with him, God can use those things that are hard for his glory. You need to be born again, Jesus said. You need to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that we're sinners. Let this represent sin, and you and me all have sin. We've fallen short of the glory of God. God, who is perfect, cannot allow sin into heaven. This is blocking us from going to heaven, to, to be redeemed. We, we, we can't save ourselves. But God, who is love, God, who is good, God that created everything perfect, and we blew it, loved you so much that he sent his son, Jesus, to die on a cross to pay for your sins. And the Bible says when you trust in him, you have eternal life. My friends, that is the great news that both Ron and Shelley Hamilton know, their children know, thousands of children heard about Jesus because of Patch the Pirate and their adventures. And now you also have heard the message of salvation. Do not reject the Lord Jesus Christ because he loves you. This is not about religion. This is not about works. This is about trust, faith, in the person and work of Jesus, the Son of God, who died and rose again for your sins. Believe in him, and you will have everlasting life. Have you faced a dark time in your life? Has your life been marked by discouragement and disappointment? Have you been searching for hope? James Scudder's new book, Finding Hope, will help you find a way past your problems and show you how to achieve spiritual success. The book, Finding Hope, will bring hope and purpose to your life, and it will help you be successful in the Lord every day. Finding Hope takes the lessons the Apostle Peter learned after failing the Lord and applies them to your life today. And it works. Finding Hope showed me that even in my failures, 
God can still love me and use me. What I enjoyed about Finding Hope is it's not another self-help book. It is the reality of life, how we will fail and we will fall on our face. But the story of Peter told by Pastor Scudder is that we need Jesus. I think Finding Hope has helped me because I know that when I'm struggling, that Jesus is there for me at all times. As Christians, we know that we're forgiven by God, but many people still feel like failures. Finding hope will get you past the feeling of failure and bring you to realizing the fullness of God's forgiveness. Finding hope will show you how to live each day with peace and purpose. To order Finding Hope, go online to ingrace.tv or call 1-800-78-GRACE. You can also write to Ingrace, 60 Quentin Road, Lake Zurich, Illinois, 60047. When you donate to the cause of the gospel of grace, Jim Scudder will send you this book, Finding Hope, as a thank you. If you become an Ingrace partner by setting up a monthly reoccurring gift, Jim Scudder will personalize and sign your copy of Finding Hope. I hope you make a donation and get this helpful book, Finding Hope. When you give to Ingrace, you will also help thousands of others find hope. If you commit to a monthly gift, I would be so honored to personalize and sign Finding Hope for you. I would love to hear from you today. Join us next week for part two of this special series, Triumph in Tragedy. But Jonathan, when he was 18, took an antibiotic for acne that triggered um, a clinical depression very much out of his mind. Mother's Day 2013, he, he tragically took his life. We went to church and got a, a text message from him saying, I'm going to take my life, but I love you and Dad. So. You definitely want to set your DVR and record every single In Grace episode. Don't miss one of them. You will be so blessed as we learn all about God's world and God's Word. In Grace is a viewer-supported ministry. Thank you for your prayers and gifts.